Okay. Why don't we uh, talk about uh, 300 millimeter 2.8s? Okay. 300 millimeter 2.8s uh, confuse people, and they don't know what to get, or they spend a lot of money and then they get the wrong lens. Basically, we can sum it down like this. <clears throat> Oh, by the way, the reason why there's no lens caps uh, for uh, big lenses like this is the lens cap is called insurance. <laughs> That's good. Insurance. There are 15 different versions all the way back to the non-AI 300mm 2.8s, okay, 15. Uh, but of those, there are really only six categories with some minor nuances in there. And ultimately, among uh, those uh, six categories, there are only a couple to to think about getting. Now, the uh, modern uh, EDVR2 is a five thousand four hundred dollars. It's no faster than this lens. They both have Ring ultrasonic motors in this. The AFS. Um, now, this is the, the AFS uh, version one, made from 2000, 1996 to 2001. This is actually the heaviest. 300 millimeter nick or um, but of the uh, current versions there's the VR1 and the VR2 those are the uh, vibration reduction versions of uh, the 300 now for panning on the sidelines of a sports uh, action uh, don't really need VR especially on stuff like Nikon D500 high ISO f2.8 do you really have any issues uh, with shake some people do obviously it is there for a reason um, I don't think it's actually worth it. Also, it is the case. However, God knows how much that lens is going to be. It's probably going to be like, let's say $6,800. I'm guessing that's probably what it's going to cost. There's going to be a new version of 300mm 2.8 come out next year for 2017. It's basically going to be like the updated version of the new 70-200 uh, VRE with the fluorite element. So it's going to be a ultra lightweight, relatively speaking. It's probably going to be 13 elements. Uh, all of them have been 11 elements, uh, starting at uh, the uh, yeah, starting at the uh, D series screw dive. Now this is a D series also. This is the also the thing that screws people up. They say, well, I gotta, what what lens do you recommend? Well, 300 millimeter 2.8 D. Well, you know what? When you say 300 millimeter 2.8 D series Nikkor, that doesn't mean shit. The reason why it doesn't mean anything because you could be talking about a, a screw drive. Uh, D series, which is the IFED. Um, well, that's where that uh, first came out. The screw drive EFID, 1986 to uh, 2005, I believe, on the uh, screw drive uh, D series Nikkor. There's some minor nuances in there. It's actually marked by M slash A ring, manual slash automatic ring, uh, located right here above. Uh, uh, the badge plate on the lens. It is actually screw driven lens. Obviously, especially on a lens like this, not fast. Uh, for uh, portraiture or uh, general shooting, yeah, fine for portraiture. But I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well get a manual focus like the 300mm AIS I have here right here. This is uh, 2.8 uh, also. I think this one is uh, 5.2 pounds. This is 6.1 pounds. This is the heaviest 300mm 2.8. Um, now, of the five uh, categories that we have, we're not considering the non-AI Nikkor 300mm 2.8s. We can start at the AI, AIS category. Minor nuances between those, those are nine element lenses. Everything after those, starting at the D-series screw drive 300mm, you're looking at uh, 11 elements and nine groups. So everything up to the current version is 11 elements. Now, the new one I hear is going to be 300, I mean, excuse me, going to be 13 element uh, fluorite Nikkor, but it's going to be a wee bit faster, going to have better vibration reduction, and it's going to be lighter. The only problem with that is the caveat is that they're going to jack up the price, about $1,800 from what I hear, on the uh, new E-Series uh, Nikkor. Um, yeah, this one is actually made between uh, 1996 and uh, 2001, and uh, this is also, they're all EDIFs. Starting at the uh, screw drive and also on the AIS or uh, internal focus uh, ED element uh, uh, 300 millimeter 2.8s. Um, yeah, the version 2 from 2001 to 2004. This one's 1996 2004. Yeah, 19, uh, yeah 2001 to 2004 is the second version of this, which just focused a little bit uh, closer and uh, was uh, like three quarters of a pound, I believe, lighter. 
but basically the same lens as the one I'm uh, I'm uh, holding uh, in my hand right now. This is the very first AFS lens. Now, even though they started production on this in uh, 1996, the very newest ones, the G series EDIF for $5,400, is not really. It's not faster. There is a hair's difference if you like go back and forth, but there really isn't. I mean, it's a Ring Ultrasonic internal uh, uh, hubless uh, driven lens. And uh, this lens is just blasting fat. What? A lens from 1990? Actually, this is uh, on the serial number on this particular lens. This is one of the last ones they produced. There were on this before they switched to the AFS2. There were two different versions of this lens. Mine is the latter version. They made some minor changes on uh, the manual and automatic switches. And then the AFS2, like I said, is just a little bit more lightweight, focuses in a little uh, closer. Same damn lens. Uh, the last three iterations are all EDIF VR, uh, VR1, to of two, which are two versions, and there's uh, one version of the VR2, which is a current lens, which is, <coughs> oh my god, $5,400, you know, a lot of money. Um, but no faster, no better. Optically, no better either. As far as the output, I mean, I, you know, no, there's nothing, there's nothing extra there. It's not sharper, doesn't have better saturation. There's 11 elements in 8 groups. Um, does have VR. Um, however, I'm really good with these lenses. I've uh, got no issues either hand holding them or using them with a monopod and knowing how to eliminate shake. And the addition of a low noise, high ISO, and the Nikon D500 makes this an ideal lens. I haven't been asked why you would actually own a 300mm 2.8 beast like this as opposed to the Nikkor 200-500. Well, the Nikkor 200-500, even though it's a high praiseworthy lens, that lens does not, even though it's actually quite beautiful at 5.6 and creamy bokeh, does not render the same. If you go to the Flickr page for this lens, the AFS lenses, the AFS 300mm 2.8s, oh my god in heaven, there is nothing like the output of these lenses. They are absolutely astounding. Incredible! Just straight out of camera, looks like you uh, dropped, uh, you you pounded all the uh, sliders in Lightroom. It means, wow, man, is that sharp? Wow, look at that! And the black and white too. Also, the compression uh, for portraiture. Yeah, there are a lot of people who use 300 millimeter 2.8s for portraiture. Not an ideal lens because of the weight. You know, the fact that it is a gigantic monster. Also, by the way, if you own a lens like this, you never mount this on your camera. You mount your camera on the lens. You never mount the lens on the camera. And the first thing you need to do if you ever think about getting one of these is uh, call your insurance agent up and go, hello, yeah, I want to insure an expensive lens in case I drop it. <laughs> Usually this lens uh, sells used, however not in this shape. This one is like straight out of factory. Because I used to own this lens. Now I have it back. Also we do have four uh, uh, on all the AFS and onwards. We do have uh, four auto uh, autofocus uh, activation switches. Now, this is a Ring Ultrasonic. Now, the one lens, not just the one, but the one lens to seriously avoid on the 300 is the AFI. Uh, the AFI, uh, there are no parts. If the autofocus motor in that sucker breaks, which is different, then you're screwed. And you got a really expensive lens that isn't worth crap. Uh, there's no point. I don't care how much money you got. They're really... The only way you're going to fix it is if you buy another AFI and you tear it apart and, you know, and then we defeat the purpose, right? So you got a dead-ass lens. So don't even think about buying an AFI. That's why there's a lot of them for sale, especially the Japanese. The Japanese are actually taking, uh, taking advantage a little bit of American ignorance on that lens. Or someone thinks, ah, oh, I want a 300mm 2A. This lens looks really nice and clean and it's relatively cheap. The AFI version, by the way, is the one that came before this. AFI is not only not so fast, like I said, once it breaks, you're screwed! Because <laughs> you can't, there are no parts to fix it! This is from Nikon Corporate. Hello, we got no parts to fix that old lens no more. Um, no, no on the AFI. I said usually about $2,200 on this lens. Um, in this shape, however, this one's worth like, uh, oh, about, yeah, about uh, 20 Twenty-three, $2,400 in this shape. This one is mint almost as new, so it's incredible condition. This is the uh, HK22 uh, lens hood. I mean, screw it off here so you can actually see how large the lens really is. 
You gotta be careful taking these lens hoods off too. If you're if you're not careful, you can do this number when you take the hood off and go like this, and then scratch your front element, and then you go, oh my god! <laughs> you see, there's you see, there's no filter rings on this. You know, there ain't nowhere you're gonna screw in a lens, a filter, a protective filter on this. You wouldn't want a protective filter on a lens like this anyway. What you want is insurance. Here are the uh, four autofocus activation buttons. You can see them at 90 degrees from each other um, around the lens. Let's go on and set this down over here. God, it's obnoxiously heavy. And set that down over here and take a look at another 300 millimeter. This is a one of high recommendation. Obviously, you're not going to use this for birding or sports or action, really. It has a, a built in uh, lens hood. Here we go. This is the AIS Nikkor 300mm 2.8. It is internal focus. Actually, the focus ring on this is so easy to move, you can just move it with a pinky finger. These lenses are typically like 880 bucks, plus or minus 100, depending on condition. And since it's an older lens, you know, um, most of them are not in the best shape in the world. They just aren't. No, they're not. Um, Manual focus, obviously. Um, for portraiture, however, the compression and uh, the fact that this is a simplex uh, eight element, this one, yeah, this this particular AIS is an eight element lens. Man, the color, the micro contrast, the use of this on a monopod, of course, since it's not only manual focus but has no VR, is absolutely incredible. Like if you're going to take someone to the beach and take this lens and step back, you know, a few dozen yards. Do a head and shoulder, a full body shot. Nothing, you know, nothing looks like this. Just take, go to the Flickr page and take a peek. See, um, there are not a lot of people using uh, this lens, but uh, because it's uh, manual focus, and they think, oh, you know, it's extremely heavy. It's not autofocus. There's no VR. You know, that's not an issue with portraiture, and uh, the images that come off of this are absolutely incredible, and it's worth every bit of the $800 it actually does cost. Uh, this is absolute uh, perfection and simplicity personified on the AIS, but so is the AFS back there. But you're talking about $800 versus typically $2,200 for one in that condition. One in bad shape from Japan. I mean, it's working fine and everything, but it looks like somebody beat the piss out of it like a redheaded stepchild. <laughs> like this lens back here in bad or not so awesome shape. You know, cheapest you're still going to find it for is like $1,800. So... That's it. So there are 15 different versions of 300mm 2.8 from Nikon. Of those, there really are only uh, five categories. There's uh, this, the AI, the AIS subset. Then there's the screw drive autofocus, slow autofocus. Typically, those lenses are about $1,300. It depends on the condition and the price you get it for. Those are decently fine lenses, you know. You know, $1,400, $1,500, you know. Typically about thirteen, twelve hundred dollars in in good shape, good shape. The AFI, don't even think about buying an AFI because if it breaks, you're screwed. <laughs> you can't, you're not going to get it fixed. And then the AFS versions is version one, and there's version two, which is a little bit lighter, a little bit faster autofocus. And then there are their insanely expensive a VR1 and VR2 uh, AFS Nikkors, which are a lighter weight. They're not any faster in autofocus because this is also an AFS. The latest and greatest for five thousand four hundred dollars is no faster in autofocus than this is. Well, it is just a wee 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 tiny bit faster, but imperceivably so faster. So that's the rundown on all the three hundred millimeter two eights, which to get, which to avoid, and uh, these ain't uh, cheap lenses. No, they ain't cheap. It doesn't matter what you get; they ain't cheap. You know how much this lens used to cost back in the day? Like when it first rolled out? I mean, damn. It's like you were rocking and rolling if you had this lens. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's manual photo. Yeah, back then, though, you were king. It's like, damn, look at that. It cost a lot of money. And now it doesn't. Actually, it still costs a lot of money. <laughs> Eight or $900. It's still not a cheap lens. Relatively speaking, however, compared to when it came out, it was. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you uh, happy, happy, and uh, I'll catch you later.